All right, chemistry, let's take a look at chapter 3, section 3. Uh, we are now going to be talking about counting atoms, okay? Counting how many atoms there are. Pre present a sample, and no, you do not actually count each one. We have a se secret trick we're going to talk about. All right, the objectives for this section. I want you to be able to explain what isotopes are. And in order to do that, you're going to need to define atomic number and mass number and describe how they apply to isotopes. And lastly, given the identity of a nuclide, determine its number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. All right, let's get started. Talking about atomic number and mass number. The number of protons that an atom has is known as the atom's atomic number. The atomic number is the same for all atoms of an element. <coughs> so what that means is because each element has a unique number of protons, no two elements have the same atomic number. For example, the atomic number for hydrogen is one because the nucleus of each hydrogen atom has one proton. Uh, another element, oxygen for example, has eight protons, so its atomic number is eight. Now, atomic numbers are always whole numbers. Now, that should make sense if you go back to last section and um, Dalton's postulates for his atomic theory that atoms cannot be subdivided at all, um, and which we know under normal chemical processes that, that can't happen. But you can't have half of an atom. You can't have half of an atom. Uh, or um, I'm sorry, I should say, you can't have half of a proton. Okay, You can't have half a proton. You either have a proton or you don't. And so that means is you have whole numbers of protons. And if you have whole numbers of protons, you have whole number atomic numbers. The atomic number also reveals the number of electrons in an atom of that element. <coughs> as long as you assume that the atom is neutral, the number of negatively charged electrons must equal the number of positively charged protons. Okay, A little bit of deduction there, a little Sherlock Holmes action going on. If, as long as we assume that the atom is neutral, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. So let's take a look at this, a uh, little graphical representation. Um, this is oxygen here. It's number eight and therefore has eight protons. We know that. Uh, the atomic number tells you that oxygen has eight protons. But if we assume that it's neutral in this normal state, we can also see that it has eight electrons. Now, as we move forward, we'll talk about that eight neutrons means and what this 16 right here means. But for right now, we're focusing on atomic number and number of electrons. <coughs> the mass number, like I just mentioned, is the sum of the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Okay, so atomic number is just the number of protons. Mass number is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Okay? You can calculate the number of neutrons in an atom by subtracting the atomic number, okay, again, the number of protons, from the mass number, which is the sum of the protons and neutrons. So it'll look something like this. Mass number minus atomic number equals number of neutrons. Now, unlike the atomic number, the mass number can vary among atoms of a single element. For example, <coughs> a particular atom of neon has a mass number of 20. Because the atomic number for an atom of neon is 10, okay, and you can see that easily by looking at the periodic table, neon has 10 protons. Well, if I take the number of protons and neutrons, which is 20, and then subtract the number of protons, which is 10, we find the number of neutrons, which is also 10 here. So back to this oxygen atom. Uh, the neon atom, again, has 10 protons. What the... I'm looking at oxygen. Uh-oh. Typo. Okay, the oxygen atom here, the oxygen atom here has eight protons and eight electrons. It also has eight neutrons because the mass number, you can see here on the periodic table, is 16. 16. So let's look at a sample problem, something that you might see on a worksheet, a quiz, or a test. How many protons, electrons, and neutrons are present in an atom of copper whose atomic number is 29 and whose mass number is 64? So how do we set this up? Well, we know that the atomic number indicates the number of protons in the nucleus of a copper atom. 
So the atomic number is 29, so I know the number of protons is 29. A copper atom must be electrically neutral, so the number of electrons must equal the number of protons. Okay, so I also know that my number of electrons is 29. The mass number indicates the total number of protons and neutrons. I've, I've already been told my mass number here is 64. I was told by the question. And I subtract my atomic number, and I get 35. 35. So protons, 29. Electrons, 29. Neutrons, 35 here. Now each element has a name, and the same name is given to all atoms of that element. That seems kind of uh, obvious. The element sulfur is composed of sulfur atoms. Each element has a symbol, and the same symbol is used to represent one of, uh, one of the element's atoms. The atomic number and the mass number are sometimes written with an element's symbol. Now the atomic number always appears on the lower left of the symbol, whereas mass numbers always appear on the upper left of the symbol. You can write both numbers by the symbol and simply combine them. And so what we're seeing here um, hydrogen having an uh, atomic number of one, helium atomic number two, lithium atomic number three, beryllium atomic number four, boron atomic number five. We see mass numbers. This hydrogen has a mass of one. This hydrogen has a mass of two. You can tell it has one neutron in the nucleus right there. This helium has a mass of three. This helium has a mass of four. Again, uh, two, sorry, two neutrons here, one neutron here. Again, I'm just subtracting the atomic number from the mass number. And uh, you can see, you, you will see any and all of these types of notations, any and all of these types of notations. Um, <coughs> but also, uh, remember that one element can be represented by more than one type of notation. I already hinted at, uh, we have hydrogen here, we have three isotopes um, of hydrogen. We have the type, I know it's hydrogen, not only because of the symbol, but because of the one proton. There are different isotopes of hydrogen because I can tell I have no neutrons here, one neutron here, and two neutrons here. But it's all still hydrogen. So this gets us uh, to our idea of isotopes. All atoms of the same element have the same atomic number, and they have the same number of protons. But atoms do not necessarily have the same number of neutrons. Atoms of the same element that have different number of neutrons are called isotopes. One standard method of identifying isotopes is to write the mass number with a hyphen after the name of an element. So it looks something like helium-3 or helium-4. Yeah, that number there is the mass number. Uh, the second method for identifying isotopes uh, shows the composition of the nucleus um, using the isotope's nuclear symbol. Okay, so we uh, show helium-3 and helium-4 in this way, use the symbol, uh, and then we actually write the atomic number and the mass number uh, as a subscript and a superscript. Um, all isotopes of an element, they have the same atomic number. Again, hit that on the head. They have the same atomic number. However, their atomic masses are not necessarily the same because the number of neutrons uh, in the nucleus of each isotope varies. That's what it means to be an isotope. So let's look at helium-3 and helium-4. Let's actually take a look at what those atoms look like. You can see this blue diffuse area. Okay, that's the electron cloud. We know that electrons may be found in this area. But right now we're looking at the nucleus. If we look at helium-3, I can tell it's helium because there are two protons. Helium-4, I can tell it's helium because there are two protons. Now what makes them isotopes of one another is this type of helium only has one neutron. This type of helium has two neutrons. <coughs> and so the mass number is going to be different for both of these atoms. Okay, They're both still helium. They both have um, the same chemical properties. It's just that helium-4 is a little bit more massive than helium-3. <coughs> You might wonder, you know, why there are uh, varying numbers of neutrons. It has to do with stability. Um, if we look at all the uh, stable isotopes of lead, we can get an idea. Uh, we can get a peek at this idea. So uh, there are four different uh, isotopes of lead. Lead 204, lead 206, lead 207, lead 208. Okay. And so we see that the mass number uh, varies but the atomic number is always 82 because it's lead. Lead is defined as having 82 protons. What changes is the number of neutrons. Now again, just taking the difference between the mass number and the atomic number, we get the number of neutrons. 
So 122, 124, 125, 126. Now you might ask, why isn't there a lead 205? Why isn't there a type of lead that has 123 neutrons? Because it doesn't form a stable isotope. Okay, if it's uh, an, an, a not a stable isotope, it will decay until it be fine until it becomes a stable isotope until it finds a stable configuration. <coughs> All right, I'll take a look at another sample here. Uh, calculate the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in oxygen 17 and oxygen 18. So atomic number, again, equals the number of protons. That equals the number of electrons. So for oxygen's case, that's eight. Okay, eight protons, eight electrons. Now if I go to find the number of neutrons, I'm going to take the mass number and subtract the atomic number. For oxygen 17, it's going to look like 17 minus eight, which gives me nine neutrons. Uh, for oxygen 18, that's going to give me 10 neutrons because I'm taking uh, eight away from 18. All right, chemistry. <coughs> so far in this section, we have a defined isotope. You should be able to explain what an isotope is. Uh, we have defined atomic number and mass number and then related uh, those two terms to isotopes. And then we have looked at examples of how to determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in different isotopes. All right, chemistry, I will see you next period.